What's up everyone? I recently posted a video about my progress remaking Pokemon Red in Godot, and how the whole game is built upon the underlying event system, and I was asked about the state machine that powers my NPCs. For anyone who may be unfamiliar, a finite state machine in game development terms is just a structure of defining logic which can only exist in a single state at any given time. For example, in a stealth game, common states you might find the enemy performing are patrolling an area and chasing the player. These states are usually self-controlled, like the enemy changing its state depending on observation of the player, but they can also be external, like a nearby enemy signaling that they may have found something. In a game like Pokemon Red though, this concept is much more simple, and chances are your needs are a little bit more simple as well. If we take a look at the spawner that spawns blue, you can see that it has a reference to two event gates. The idle event gate is responsible for what the NPC is doing while it's simply existing. In the case of blue, that's turning side to side like a dancing goth kid from South Park. The root event gate is responsible for how the NPC reacts to being interacted with. And both of these are decision trees that use conditional resources to determine what the process does based on the current state of the game. Every NPC spawner will spawn NPCs through the NPC manager. When the player triggers an event, the manager will pause their idle event gates, and when the event is complete, the manager will tell them to resume. And that's really all there is to it. Two singular states that never coexist. No secret scripts or hidden logic. I tend to code really functionally while writing spaghetti to avoid too much clumpage, so the states are currently defined by functions. But once I have all the groundwork laid out, I am going to go back through and refactor everything before stripping out the art assets and making all the code public. Like, comment, and subscribe for that, by the way. But the point of making this video is just to make sure that everyone's on the same page about what's really important when you're developing your games. A state machine is just a concept. Its complexity is defined by what happens in any particular state, and how it moves from one state to another. Like this decision tree on the Pokeballs in Oak's lab that changed from giving you a simple dialogue to facilitating your choice of first Pokemon. So stop worrying so much about making things a certain way, just worry about finishing the things you start to make. And, as always, thanks for watching.